to the morning show here on Get Active TV. I'm Kelly. And I'm Barbara. And we're back with your fun, new packed morning routine to navigate this new normal. But before we get to the fun stuff, though, it's time for a quick update. The data, the details, the works. Now, each morning, we'll cut through the fake news and give you all the essential updates that you need to know. So it was a record number of cases yesterday, unfortunately, because this really isn't good news. 386 new cases, of which 280 were linked to the dormitories and known clusters, the vast majority of them work permit holders. 12 were linked to other cases and 94 are still pending contact tracing. The good news, though, is that we have seen 26 cases discharged as of yesterday, bringing our total number to 586 patients who have fully recovered. Now, guys, I cannot stress enough that we need to be staying at home. If we do go out, we must be wearing our masks, especially if we're going to the markets, the supermarkets, and doing our essential daily things. But if you've not got anything essential, go home, stay home, work out with us. It, it really doesn't matter. Plus, as of Sunday, 12th April, you will be fined immediately $300 if you are seen to be flouting those circuit breaker measures. So don't take the risk, just stay at home and enjoy your creature comforts like your sofa and your bed, your Netflix and us here on YouTube and Facebook. And you won't even risk that $300. Exactly, we can't emphasize enough that you do need to stay indoors. Now, a lot of people have been going outdoors for walks, for a little bit of exercise here and there. But if you can, as far as possible, try and stagger it out. It does tend to get a little bit crowded. Um, space out, you know, try to avoid those peak timings. And if you need to get food, then just order online. Seriously, there are so many options right now for you Grab to do that. Grab delivery. Exactly. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our daily update. Make sure you join us for the first part of our show if you're super busy, right? If you miss everything else, never mind. Make sure that you join us as we make sure that you get all the updates on the latest developments from credible sources, i.e. the government. We've also got incentives for you to tune into as well. We've got prizes, vouchers to be given away every single day starting next week in a game that we like to call Quick Draw. That's right, it's fast as fingers first. So what we'll do is we will be flashing up something or maybe we'll be asking you a question. The first five people to respond with the correct answer will walk away with those vouchers. And it's really easy because all you need to do is just text into us, right, Barbara? That's right, we wanna keep the conversation as open as possible. So if you've got any thoughts or questions, you can text them to us and we will address them on the show live as well. So if you've got a question for any of our guests, today we've got Alyssa Cow, who's going to be teaching us some key stretches from the comfort of your own bed with a pillow as an aid. Plus, mindfulness coach Helen Claire Rosario will be joining us to give us some pointers on how we can keep calm and carry on. It's a, uh, it's a different world we live in right now, and whether you're living alone, surrounded by family, we're all trying to find that balance and also stay sane while we're at home. So if you've got any questions for our guests or for Kelly and I, mm -hmm. ask away. The WhatsApp number is, are you ready? Pen, pencil or key in it into your phone, 9721-7756. Once again, 9721-7756. What are you waiting for? Can't wait to hear from you. Okay, we're gonna head off for a short break now that we've got that update done with, all the serious stuff done, and then we can come back with fun things. That's right, still to come, if you do not like creepy crawlies, this may not be the activity for you, or will it? Mm, plus, Barbara's gonna be chatting with Alyssa Cow about how you can get your stretch on from the comfort of your own bed. Stay with us here on The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara.
Welcome to the morning show, your gateway to navigating the new normal, whatever that is looking like right now. Hopefully you guys tuned in earlier on this morning. There was a workout with Health As House Athletics uh, with Regan Sakina and Tris. And uh, I've been for their classes before and it's uh, it gets quite intense. So I hope you had a good sweat session and hopefully a good cool down as well. There is always a big, big burn that comes after their classes. And although, although it feels great the next morning when I wake up, I do find it a little bit of a struggle to get out of bed, but fear not. Uh, we do have something to combat with that. I've got Alyssa Carl with me here today. Hi, Alyssa. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. How yes, are you? I am. I'm great. Good. Thank you. Glad that you're here. <laughs> um, so, Alyssa, you're a, a yoga instructor. You're a bar instructor. You teach skiing as well. So you've been in and out of the country quite a lot over the past year or so um, teaching. Uh, how's that been? How is yoga incorporated into teaching skiing as well? Um, practicing yoga encourages a lot of body awareness, coordination and flexibility. So all these things come into play when you ski. It helps you balance better on your skis and it also gives you a wider range of movement when you ski. But I find that yoga actually helps in terms of recovery uh -huh. because skiing puts a lot of pressure on your knees and on your joints. Right. So my knees definitely do not work like they used to before. Oh. So um, <laughs> when you're on the ski lodges with, with people, do you teach yoga as well as, yeah. as skiing? Yeah, so I teach yoga as I, like when I ski. In, during ski seasons, I teach yoga. And I find that the practice there tends to move towards a more restorative practice. So that includes a lot of pillows, a lot of blankets in a dark room. So it sounds like a very nice place to be. I was gonna say, that's my, that's my zen it's out very, one day right there. It's um, very nice and cozy. So I, um, I know we haven't brought this pillow here for a pillow fight, because I don't have one and that would be unfair. Um, so what are we gonna do? What, what is restorative pillow, uh, pillow stretches? What does it involve? Can I do it in bed? Yes, you can. So all the stretches that we will be doing today will be supported by a pillow. So this, I find that this really helps to make the whole process of stretching a lot less intimidating. It eases you into the stretch and it allows you time to slowly soften your muscles and it honors your body. It's nice and gentle. It can be done by everyone. Okay, so you, in your bed. Yes. you've got this. <laughs> Beautiful big pillow here. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to do uh, restorative pillow stretches at home, is this the kind of pillow that we should go in? What, what should we look out for or what a, kind of pillow at home? A big pillow that can still support your weight. So it shouldn't sink down too much when you put weight on it. It should still be able to kind of support you. So a firm, big pillow. Rectangle pillow, is it okay? Because I don't have any big square pillows. Rectangle on. pillow, it's fine okay. as, as long well, as yeah. it's got, as long it as it hold supports you. you yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's get straight into these three stretches first. Okay. Um, show me what you got. What's the first one so, that we're going to work on? The first stretch today is a reclining butterfly stretch that is supported with your pillow. So you're going to put the pillow on the floor. Yep. And then you're going to come in front of the pillow. So if you're on your bed, ooh, my knees just cracked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so heels together, legs are out in your normal butterfly position. So what we want to do is fold over the pillow so that our entire body is nice and supported by the pillow. I'm just going to roll down back. Mm -hmm. And then your head can rest either on the pillow or on the ground. And then your legs are out nice and wide. Your hands can come by the side. It's a good hip opener. And it, it's a good chest opener as well because you're folded and stretched over the pillow. I was going to say, especially if you've got like a long rectangle pillow that most of us have in bed, then your, your shoulders kind of flop back. You get to open yeah. up that chest as well. Ooh, yeah. very nice. That's I really do like good. that one. I think I'll be quite happy doing that one in bed. All right, what's the next one that we've got? The next one is a hamstring stretch. So uh, a lot of us have really tight hamstrings. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. stretching could be very painful as you fold over. So the pillow here will support you on top. So we fold over the pillow at the top. Oh. So it supports your upper body. It makes it a lot easier for you instead of having to, if you can't reach your toes, you tend to overcompensate by rounding your spine. Mm -hmm. So the pillow here really allows you just to let your belly kind of relax on the pillow and then you get that hamstring stretch in as well. And how do you usually incorporate your, I know you're really good with breathing techniques when it comes to yoga. Um, how have you been incorporating that in? 
or how could someone incorporate that into these stretches? So with breathing techniques, you want to use your exhale breath as you stretch. So every time you take that exhale, you want to deepen that stretch a little more. So as you inhale, everything lifts, and as you exhale, everything kind of melts down into the pillow and then the stretch slowly deepens. Awesome, okay, what's the, what's the next one we've got? The last one that we have today is a supported pigeon. So again, if we've got tight hips, tight hamstrings, sometimes we can't really place our weight down on the ground and it gets super uncomfortable. I was right? going to say, when I try and do a <laughs> pigeon stretch, like none of it sits yeah, on so the ground. It gets a bit intimidating for some people. So you can place the pillow, the big pillow, just underneath you. And same thing, you sit over it and everything is nice and supported. And I think that kind of helps you to like angle yeah. where your front leg should be. Definitely. And keeping those hips nice yeah. and square. square. Yes. Oh, look and at me. if you have a second pillow, it can come in front of you so that you can fold over it so everything stays supported. Okay. And I think you've also got a jump up. You've Oof. also got a video on a, a whole bunch of these stretches as well. Yeah. So with the whole circuit breaker and, and now that you're back in Singapore, how how are you trying to adapt? Because I know you're very you're a very outgoing girl. You're always teaching, you're always training. How has that affected things for you? Um, so now I'm doing everything at home. Okay. Um, I teach stretch classes online with F45. So that happens three times a week and that is good for me because I get to stretch as well yep. as teach. So that's perfect. And then I just do my workouts at home and I've been starting to film my workouts as well. Uh -huh. So that's, that's been interesting. They're great. You've got a really like nice zen voice. Like when I listen to her videos and I do my stretch, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do this. <laughs> um, and I have to ask, okay, so when you go in uh, ski, these ski seasons, yes. I know you're out there with your boyfriend. I am. Ollie. Yes. Um, and he's lovely. He's great. He's obviously gone back to the UK. He has. And you're here. I am. So how is that? I know the whole point of you guys going for ski season was to uh, kind of be done with the whole long distance relationship. Yes. Thing. So COVID-19 hasn't exactly been friendly in that sense. Brought how us back are you to guys, square one. Yeah, how are you guys coping with that one? Um, the same. Skype, lots of Skype calls and lots of pictures. How, how many years has it been now? It's been three years. Okay, you guys yeah, are fine. fine. You've got this in the back. Okay, so there's a, one last thing. We have a trend or a game that we play every single day. And I saw Kelly do this challenge a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it'd be really fun if we could do it together. So it's called the Plank Challenge. Uh, it's one of those TikTok challenges. We're going to do a quick play so that you know exactly what we're talking about, and then we're going to try it out ourselves. Oh, no. So it's like you've got commando, commando, plank jacks, shoulder tap, shoulder tap. And back to push-ups. Okay. okay, so because of social distancing, we can't kiss. We're, well, <laughs> we can't kiss, we can't fist bump, we can't high five, and we probably can't jump over each other either. So what we're gonna do is uh, obviously not kiss. Um, instead of high fiving each other, we will do double shoulder tap, and then we'll do uh, a, two jumps up like a burpee, and then okay. to finish off with two push-ups. But okay. we're gonna practice first. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go down into a plank. This is where my form gets questioned because <laughs> I'm next to the champ. Okay, so it's elbow, elbow, hand, hand, plank jack, plank jack, shoulder tap, <laughs> shoulder tap. And then we'll come in for a jump, go back down, another jump, go back down. And then we finish off with two push-ups. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But we're going to try and do it to a count. So we're going to go five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jump, jump, push, push. My arms are shaking already. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we good to go? Yeah. Okay. We're going to count down. We're going to go five, six, seven, eight. Down, up, open, <laughs> open, tap, tap, and jump. And jump and finish off with two push-ups. Push, push really good. Push. <laughs> and we're done. Woo! I really wanted to high five you there, but it's like an air <laughs> high five. Okay, well, you guys pop your pillow back where it belongs. We're gonna go for a little break 
And when we come back, we've got the bugs to keep the kiddos amused uh, without having those creepy crawlies in-house. Thanks for having us, Alyssa. We'll see you back in a sec. tuned into the morning show with me Kelly Latimer and my favorite sister Barbara I should hope I'm your favorite sister I'm your only sister anyway now that the kiddos are officially always home each day we're finding various ways to make sure that you can keep them amused tap into that competitive streak with a little bit of a race but instead of the kids running around we're gonna DIY some creepy crawlies instead we've got a whole basket of materials here that is absolutely correct now this was one that i'd actually done with sienna to try and keep her occupied the other day and it was one of those things that i found on instagram um and i think busy toddlers is a great account to follow if you haven't done so before but oh, that's, essentially, that's the handle okay yep. uh, but essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking art craft paper just like this um and it's cheap stuff that i found online and got delivered because all the stores are closed, so make sure you get them delivered. Um, and essentially what we're going to be doing is making caterpillars so that we can race them. Now, you do need to get paper which is a little bit thicker, so which one would you like me? Do um, you I'm going to go with the... Pom-poms? Yeah, pom-poms. You're going to go with pom-poms? Okay. Let's do pom-poms. Pom-poms, I'm going to do... Um, Flamingos? Yeah, I'll do flamingos and, and stuff. Okay, it's very, very simple. Essentially, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be cutting these into strips. So actually, we could have used the same piece. Um, so I'll cut it first as an example, and then you can, you can follow suit afterwards. So Because clearly, I don't know how to cut. So you need to be doing it at about an inch. Oh, you use that one because it's got a guideline, smart. Yeah, I know, clever, right? Okay, so you can take the scissors and then you can cut that. So what you wanna be doing is you have like a little bit it's essentially like an inch width. Then what you'll do is you will fold it in half, like so. Then you will fold each of these corner bits in half inwards to that center part. Whoa, 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 hold up. Catch up. Fold it in Slow half. Poke. Slow poke. Slow poke. Yo. Come on. Okay, fold it in half. Okay, fold it in half, then fold it in again. 
like a heart shape. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then press it. Okay, there is one artistic person in this family. And it's our mother. <laughs> well. Okay. So one, have you folded it in yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then what you want to do is you want to take the edge pieces again and then you want to fold them in one more time to that center line. One more time from the top. I, I like little well, capitalism cannot, cannot lie. lie. Okay, and then fold in the other side as well. Other so that can't deny. <laughs> You're so retarded. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. Okay. Make so, your kid laugh. Right, so once you have it, you'll have like a little bridge shape like this. Can you see that? Just just like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah? I was like, I got a little kink so, in my So well. what you're going to be doing is you'll then take a marker, like so, and you will draw a little face. I'll do it on this side where the flamingo isn't. So, uh -huh. so um, cute. I'll show, you, I'll show you in a second. But basically, eyes and a smile. And then on the third segment, just here at the bend, just, just here. Like the third last segment after yep. the face. You are going to draw a little heart. And I'll explain why in a second. So I'm going to use the red marker. And you have to put the heart at the join line. OK? So where, where is this join line? I'll show you. I'll show you. So we've got our little smiley face here on this side. And then if you turn it around, first line, just there, second line, Third line, that's where you draw your little heart. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Barbara's struggling with the smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where's this heart again? Okay, the heart is just on the third line. One line, One, two, two line, three, three line. Yeah. Okay. I'm really good at following instructions, as you can tell. Okay. Just really slowly. So then what you do is you take a straw. What color straw would you like me? Would you like red? Pink or blue? Um, well, Sienna's favorite color is pink at the moment, so I'm going to go with pink. Actually, it's orange. She's changed. <laughs> Can't keep up. One okay. week of circuit breaker and I've got it all wrong. So now what you do is you essentially take your straw and you point your straw at the heart and you blow on the heart and hopefully this works. You've never done this before. Oh, OK. No, so you kind of need to flatten it a little bit. Oh. Yeah. And it should, oh man, maybe this isn't going to. Hey. Ah. Okay, yes. My, but kid, my caterpillar beat your caterpillar. But yes, essentially, there you go. Um, so you is it small? Are we going for small little breaths here? Yeah, small little breaths, but the idea is that by focusing the breath on the little bit of the heart, then at least your kid knows how to work it. So yeah, exactly. See, it looks kind of cute just the way it crawls. But if you use, I realize now, if you use a slightly softer paper, um, then what the caterpillar does is it actually collapses and comes back up. So, oh, so, so that's it flattens, what it's supposed it, to do. It, it flattens out. I think this was maybe a bit too hard. Um, but it flattens, and then it ends up looking a bit like this. It's it goes, inching along. Yeah, it inches out, and then it comes back. It inches out and comes back. But there you go. In theory. In theory, it was supposed to work, and it kind of worked. Failing which, you can test your lung strength, which is also a good way for testing whether you've got COVID-19. <laughs> because you've got to make sure your lungs are healthy. All righty. OK. So there you have it, an easy way for you to uh, have a fun time with your kids because failing which, if the caterpillars don't actually work, then at least They look cute. They do look very, very cute. And let's face it, getting your kids uh, active and about and just doing something in the house other than watching Paw Patrol, that'd be great. Actually, well, it, it kind of goes along with the whole like breath thing. Like you can draw lanes for them mm -hmm. and obstacles and stuff for them to go around. That gives me an idea for a segment later on this week. Anyway, we'll if you've got any cool ideas of what you're doing with your kids, feel free to text them in to us or make sure if you are attempting this challenge or anything else with your kids tag as us. well, tag us, get we active see. TV so that we can take a look. You can also tag Barbara and I as well. If your caterpillars were as cute as ours. Um, it's time for a quick break, but stay with us because when we come back, we're going to make sure that you get your sanity check.
Welcome back. It's the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. And so far, we've spoken to you about the different types of stretches you can do at home, ways to amuse your kiddos, but there is more to come. If you've got any comments or questions regarding whatever we've been doing, you remember you can always drop us a line at 9721-7756. That's 9721-7756. We're waiting to hear from you. Now, we've been promoting the online workouts big time, right? Yeah. And the physical wellness isn't everything, though. Now that you've had some time to take the first step into creating organization with the kiddos like we did yesterday and having them do some activities at home, it's now time to take some time for yourself. So joining us today is mindfulness coach Helen Claire Rosario. Helen, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's obviously different times ahead. How, how is the new normal looking like for you? Well, um, I think as I've heard from a lot of people, I concur with, with their presence right now. It's been a lot more busier than usual. Mm -hmm. um, being at home and you know, the stay at home measures um, from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to virtual meeting, um, a lot's going on. And you know, the mental well-being is taking quite a bit of hit, even for me. Mm, I can imagine. So give us the down though. You're a, a mindfulness and meditation coach. Uh, we hear a lot about mindfulness. I mean, I've been to the doctor for years about anxiety mm -hmm. and she's always told me, go and practice mindfulness, do mindfulness. Do I'm like, I don't know what it is. So give us the down though. What is mindfulness? So I like the definition as explained by um, John Kabat-Zinn, who is the founder of the mindfulness-based stress reduction program and he describes mindfulness as the awareness um, that arises from paying attention on purpose moment to moment to moment non-judgmentally and I think that's the hard part at least I for was, me I was gonna <laughs> say the, the, that the non-judgmentally non <laughs> part which I think a lot of people forget mm -hmm. um, and sometimes he likes to follow up with as if your life depends on it and I think that's more more relevant now today in, in what we're, we're you know, being faced with. Mm -hmm. Just going off that whole judgment thing, I mean, at the moment we're seeing a lot of Singaporeans who are getting flack for their lashing out at people like our safe distance ambassadors, for example, who are trying to enforce that we wear our masks, um, that we stay at home as far as possible. If people are getting slapped with a fine, obviously their, their immediate response is anger, frustration, on top of everything else that they're feeling because they're trapped at home. Um, but how can we get rid of that prejudgment towards the messenger who is simply carrying out their job and try to be more mindful? And how do we inculcate that in our society a bit more? Mm. I think it starts from us, right? Like if we, if we see someone who's probably not adhering to the you know, social distancing measures out in public, I mean, practicing that social distancing, but also seeing, I mean, there has to be something underlying some form of distress, some form of, you know, upset with that person too, to, you know, be so blatantly defiant. Um, so I think if we can practice that compassion as well, and that's what mindfulness helps to cultivate. It brings up the natural byproduct when we're being aware and being mindful is, you know, one of its compassion. And so having that compassion and empathy for, for the people around and probably just giving them a heads up, like auntie, uncle, you know, are you okay, you know, from a distance and seeing if we can kind of like urge them to kind of like go back home. And, you know, the same thing for the officers and they're just doing their job. And a lot of them, I know these jobs were created as well and they're just doing their best to like help protect the society so like you know from their end as well if, you know embodying that wakeful you know wakeful um, attitude of being aware and mindful that you know probably auntie or uncle or you know child is suffering a little bit more than usual and um, yeah I totally respect the fine though but I think if we all can also like kind of help each other out and help our neighbors out um, but it does start from home it starts from within mm. that um, you know that wakeful awareness that we need to embody, um, especially in a time like now. Uh, so, so you are the owner and founder of Nirvana Mind. Um, yes, I am. Where, you know, the, you've got meditation courses, mindfulness courses, uh, which obviously are now run online. Yes. Um, but I think my biggest question is, how can someone who is like tuning in to us today, um, your, your everyday Joe who has no deep, practice of anything, practice mindfulness starting now and going forward to help us through these times and, and hopefully in the long term. 
So I think it's important to kind of state as well that mindfulness is a form of meditation. So I think that's why it's been interchanged quite often. So it's a form of meditation and it's whereby life is your meditation teacher. So it's not going to be a thing that we're doing when we're doing mindfulness. So it's a way of being when we're practicing and incorporating mindfulness to everything we do. So the same as from the moment when we wake up, you know, what's the first thing we're doing? And um, when we are taking that shower, are you really there in the shower? Um, are you really present in that shower, having a shower, or is your next Zoom meeting in there with you? That is a really deep question. Are you really in the shower? <laughs> I mean, John, yeah, John Kabat-Zinn you know, loves to bring up that, um, that example, and Oprah loves it too. But yes, are you really there in the shower? Are you feeling, are you tuning in, checking in with your body, the sensations of the water, the, so the scent of the soap? You know, even if we are in the toilet or when you're, you know, communicating with your loved ones, right? I come up with some of the best ideas when I'm on the toilet. <laughs> So being okay, present we did not that. need to know that. <laughs> we didn't actually need to know that. But, mm -hmm. it, but it's an interesting concept to actually, yeah. and, and I think a lot of people have jumped on this slow living bandwagon as well. And you know when you're really bored and time just passes so slowly? I found that actually embracing that concept of slow living when I'm doing things that I enjoy, um, actually helps me to embrace and enjoy that time and make it stretch and last a little bit longer because I'm being more mindful about the time. So if whether it's like spending time with your kids, then you can actually enjoy that time by making sure that you are fully present and aware at that point, right? Without so, judgment. Without, without, without judgment. judgment. Yeah. I think that is the bit that a lot of people struggle with, the, the whole how do you remove judgment? Yeah, and how do you remove that monkey, monkey mind, right? the yeah. chatter and all that distraction. And I think what, what better time than now? And you know, hopefully this is the one time we have to do the circuit breaker. There might be more to come, I don't know, but taking the opportunity that we are at home with our loved ones. You know, this might never come about. I don't think it's ever happened in any of our history um, where we've had to, you know, mm. stay at home by order by the government um, for at least a month. It's like that meme where it's like, like 10 years ago, like if you were, slobbing on the couch or last year if you were slobbing on the couch you were a lazy ass but now you are saving the world <laughs> exactly so we do our part and with awareness and mindfully yeah so what do you say or what advice would you give in terms of the kind of platform people can go to to just start their mindfulness practice I think um, now that we have technology on our side and uh, readily available um, there are some quite awesome meditation teachers around the world, uh, mindfulness-based meditation teachers who are doing guided meditation. Mm -hmm. I think Mindful Leader has like a meditation going on every half an hour or every hour, wow. um, 24 hours. So they've gathered globally over 100 teachers, uh, mindfulness-based uh, teachers to guide people in, in real time, like live over, over uh, you know, whatever platform that you may be that they may be using. And I think, you know, if anything, um, just listening to you know, listening to music even, that might just help as well to mm -hmm. like bring awareness into it, bring awareness to what's happening in the body, whether you're washing your dishes, whether you're eating, so many things that you can welcome mindfulness into. And I think a lot of exercising is happening now mm. with all these programs, all these fitness instructors doing programs. That's great, that's wonderful. How do we welcome more mindfulness into that? I just want to uh, point out, John Yong, I hope you are taking notes. Uh, from all, all of the sources that you could now use to zen out before you go to sleep. It's yeah. so important to do that before you sleep, I think. Yeah. Yes, I think it's a nice way to, you know, check your inventory for the day and retire at night with, uh, you know, a nice meditation. And even when you wake up, I, I like to say this a lot, like when you wake up, maybe just stay lying for a little bit longer. Ooh, don't yeah, have to that's sit, not bad advice. Don't have to sit in, in meditation or anything, but just wake up you know, with awareness as you're lying down and like getting your muscles going, getting your movement going. I mean, I have my toddler on me all the time, but you know, that's okay. Kelly She's knows how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Feel yeah. Yeah, so how are you balancing everything then with the sort of obviously with the toddler at home, with working and trying to run your business and all of that? And you've also got um, Soulscape 2020. Yes, which has unfortunately been postponed yeah. and as it should be. And so, you know, we're really excited to, to bring that back in time to come. But, you know, how do I manage? Uh, I have a great set of tools and, you know, mindfulness based tools, obviously, being one of them. I have a great set of, uh, I have a good support team as well. Mm -hmm. uh, people with maybe a little bit more wisdom and, you know, years over me and to kind of like always 
you know, check in and touch base with them, uh, to just check in with my sanity and my yeah. mental well-being. But yeah, I embrace all the tools. Again, it's a way of being, it's a way of living, so it's not something I do. Um, and it doesn't mean I don't get upset, but it's just now how do I respond to life, then react to life and the people, places and things around me. Um, so yeah, I really embrace and I really hold on to those tools as hard as I can because it's not been easy. It's been quite, you know, quite a time of turmoil for everyone. Definitely. Well, I think just sort of to wrap this up, I think it really comes down to just emphasizing on that point of we can't control everybody else's response to us, but we can control our response to them. So if individually every single Singaporean is at home and taking control of how they are reacting to the situation, being more mindful about that situation and the emotions that they're feeling, then we can kind of address the underlying issues that maybe you're frustrated about being at home. You've had that element of control taken away from you and that freedom taken away from you, but understanding that it is for the greater good. Helen, thank you so much for joining us today. I thank really so appreciate much. everything you've shared and all those links and everything. Uh, if anyone needs to reach out to Helen, you can always reach out to Nirvana Mind and uh, I'm sure you'll be ever willing to help, right? Yes, and especially for healthcare and, uh, workers and people on the front line, um, I'm more than happy to you know, hear from them in any way I can help and support their stress you know, in this, amidst this, you know, difficult time so please reach out to me that's amazing once again thank you for joining us i think it's, it's been a uh, very insightful when it comes to this kind of thing mental health is very very important we're going to go for a quick break um but coming up when we come back we're going to bring it in to your covid19 survival hack back to the morning show, your one-stop shop on how to navigate the new normal. Mm -hmm. We all heard about the toilet paper saga, and I'm still not entirely sure why that happened. In the grand scheme of things, of th things that you would need from a supermarket, toilet paper just isn't that high up on my list. So stop hoarding the toilet paper, guys. But hey, in times like these, needs must. And uh, it doesn't help to also know a few DIY things as well, just in case you can't get your hands on some of the essentials. And Barbara obviously got this idea while she was on the toilet, because that's where she gets her best <laughs> ideas from. Uh, and Thanks. so today we're going to be making out toothpaste. Yes. but. None of the stuff that you can buy in tubes, no. With just a couple of ingredients, you can make your very own toothpaste at home, knowing with an ease of mind what exactly goes into it. So we have some coconut oil, 
some baking soda. Um, I've also got some stevia here. Um, you're supposed to use essential oils, but none of us have uh, essential oils at home. I would also like to point out as well that when you're using essential oils, you cannot just use any essential oil. You have to make sure that you are using food grade essential oil and yes, stuff that you can not actually the ingest. That, not, not the, the one, one that, that you would put in your put. aromatherapy thing. Yes. Like doesn't doesn't work, and some of them can actually be poisonous. So please, please, please do make sure that you are finding the right things. If not. Grow some mint in, in your balcony or whatever and... Smash that in there as well. Smash it up, boil it, draw out the flavor from the mint and then you can whack that Apparently in. Apparently if you smack mint leaves, that's how it releases the thing. Um, so in place of essential oils, we've got a little bit of vanilla and also um, we squeezed out a bit of lemon as well just to help make sure that there's flavor. So I've already pre-poured out everything that needs to go into our toothpaste bowl. Um, so I've got six tablespoons of coconut oil that has started Congealed. to solidify. Because we're in air conditioning. Because we're in air conditioning, but I mean, most of the time, I think when they created this recipe, it was in a cold country, therefore it's more lumpy anyway. So that's fine. We've got some coconut oil. Um, we've got six tablespoons of baking soda. Yep. Barbara just recently learned that baking soda and baking powder are two different things. What if? They are different, guys. <laughs> um, we've got a little bit of stevia just to help you make it a bit sweet as well. Um, not completely optional. And of course, we're going to put in some fresh lemon juice. Oh, something's happening. It's uh, doing a frothy thing. I think that's from the baking soda. And we're going to put some vanilla extract in there too, just because. You only want to put oh, like, you need the, yeah, you need to actually take off the lid. You need to take the top off, okay. And I'd only put a drop, because otherwise it's really strong. Okay, tiny drop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Very good. Cool, okay, cool, cool, I'll cool. just mix that up for you. Keep mixing it. Now, the other thing that you want to know is that when you have coconut oil, because it is, let's, let's just show you. Because, oops, um, when you're doing it, because you've got coconut oil and we live in Asia, if it doesn't, um, if, if it does get too runny, you can just whack it in the fridge and then you can easily... Yeah, it solidifies a little bit. So okay. we've got this really nice consistency now, which is quite toothpaste-like. Now, keeping in mind, a lot of time when we're doing these DIY things with you, um, we're also trying it for the first time. Um, <laughs> so it's like a little bit of a hit or miss. Um, but this, 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 this is looks looking good. like a hit. Yeah, this, lo this, this looks good. And it smells really nice too. Mm. It smells like sunblock mixed with banana cake. That's the coconut oil. Mm. Um, so what you want to do is have a tiny little mason jar to keep your toothpaste in. I mean, with this consistency, it's completely optional. You could probably just keep it in a store it in a cool, dry area. If you really want to pop it in the fridge, that's also fine. Just, <laughs> I, I mean. Do you want some help there? No, I can do it. There you go. So you're going to repeat that. You you're going to repeat that until it's all in the little jar and ta-da, you have your toothpaste. Yeah. So obviously we didn't make a lot, um, but I mean, Kelly you can, can just adjust it. You, yeah, you can adjust it accordingly. Um, and it's just nice to know that you, you can, can make, make toothpaste? toothpaste at home um, because I always wondered during these apocalyptic movies, you know, where zombies are taking over and there is whatever that's going on. Any movie, they never show people brushing their teeth. Yes. Do you realize that? Unless it's like a feature film, like a short film where it's an art CC. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, now we know. Maybe, maybe they made the... <laughs> okay, <laughs> doesn't look quite as impressive. It looks like we've trapped a cloud in there. But, ta-da! We have homemade toothpaste, and there you go. Right, we're gonna take a short break for you to get over our makeshift DIY abilities. Uh, <laughs> but when we come back, uh, it's a sneak peek into my lunchbox today. Don't go away.
Welcome back. It's The Morning Show with me, Barbara, and Kelly. Yesterday, we took a look at my lunchbox with Mum's sesame oil chicken, of which a few people have since asked me for the recipe. But today, Kelly's snack pack is in the limelight. What have we got? Okay, so last night I decided to throw together a Japanese curry because I really, really love Jap curry for how easy it is. You go to the supermarket, you pick up the cubes, you whack in some meat, some vegetables, you stir fry it for a little bit to sear all the meat, then you throw in some water, bring it to boil, and then you throw in the cubes, and then you're done, and you have this amazing flavored curry. So, this is my jack curry. Here we go. Oh, you've got vegetables as well. I did put vegetables in Oh, you in got it. brown rice too. Oh, no. <laughs> I look terrible. Um, so this is a slightly healthier dish than what Barbara had yesterday. Yeah, hey, hello. Um, it's true. It was okay. It wasn't okay. that bad. So as you can see, um, the Japanese curry over on this side, there are some really nice cubes of beef, which I've taken to buying wholesale, which means it's much, much cheaper. You can freeze them up and then you just slice them into steaks and then you can use them however you want. Um, I also put in some sweet potato for some good carbs, some vitamins and minerals, uh, some zucchini, some carrots, as well as some freeze-dried spinach. Now, frozen spinach is probably one of the best ways to get in some vegetables in a very, very easy way because spinach is obviously very, very nutrient-dense. But the vegetable that I'd like to focus on today is actually the zucchini. Now, when we went shopping the other day mm. for fresh vegetables, because we're only buying what we need, yes. not hoarding, so twice a week we'll maybe go and get some fresh vegetables to cook with dinner. But all the vegetables were sold out, including the onions. The only thing I could find was zucchinis. Or courgettes. Some people call them courgettes. I think they're also two different things. No, they're the same. I'm pretty sure they're different. We will fact we'll, check that for you. Well, yeah, but we'll find out. That, zucchinis, know. highly underrated. You can do so many things with them. Aside from, like I did, lump them in a curry, when after a while when they cook, they go soft. When they're uncooked, they're actually quite crunchy. So you can put them in and roast them. You can make slice zoodles. them up. You can make zoodles from them, like Barbara said. And they end up, because they get soft when cooked, uh, it actually has a, quite a nice pasta consistency. So you can throw on some bolognese, or you can turn it into ugly olio, whatever you need, but at least you know that you're not carving up. Speaking funny, of... Oh, funny story. Yes. I tried to make zoodles once, uh -huh. and I didn't realize that the zoo star stood for zucchini. Uh -huh. um, I thought you could just use cucumber. Uh -huh. Didn't work out very well, because they are very water dense. Yes. Yeah. 
cucumbers and zucchinis are very, very different. Um, aside from that, however, we do also have the brown rice. So going back to the carbohydrates. So what I did was I actually bought cowrose rice because that's what my daughter likes to eat. But then I mixed in some wild rice. So I've got some brown rice, some red rice in there, which gives it a really nice nutty flavor. I still cook it in the rice cooker the same way, but I also have a rice cooker which reduces the amount of starch when it cooks by draining out the water so that the starch water doesn't stay within your rice. What? So you actually have a lower carbohydrate content rice. Uh, I think it's it's shown, or at least it's scientifically proven to reduce the carbohydrate content by about 30%. Okay, where do I get this rice cooker from? It's, it's from Europace. It's really, really good. I absolutely love it. Um, if you guys would like to know more, let me know, drop Cheating me a message on the carb or count. whatever. But it's, <laughs> but it's a great way to get in your carbs and lower um, the, the amount of carbohydrates that you're actually ingesting. But also by including the wild rice in there, you are reducing the blood sugar spike as well. So that is my lunchbox. I will dig into that a little bit later on with my handy dandy reusable forks and spoons. And that brings us to the end of what's in my lunchbox. Well, we all clearly know who inherited mum's skills in the kitchen. Oh well. Um, so we've targeted our minds and our bodies on today's episode. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're ready to settle ourselves into the working day with a little bit of a breathing exercise. Sounds good. So if we can all take this time to focus on the sound of my voice, just get into a nice, comfortable, seated position, closing your eyes, don't worry about any thoughts that you have in your mind. Let them in. Acknowledge that they are there. We're going to take a gentle inhale through the nose for five seconds and exhale through the nose again for five seconds. Now with every inhale, imagine the air flowing through your body from the top of your head all the way down to your tippy toes. On your exhale, feel the muscles relax. Let go of any tension, relax your eyebrows, relax the mouth, focus on your breath. On the next inhale, we'll take a gentle hold for five seconds. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. With every breath, we'll increase the duration for one more second. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Inhale, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, hold for seven. Exhale for seven. Last breath, eight seconds. Inhale, two. Hold. And Exhale. And resume your natural breathing. Gently blink open your eyes. With this clear space in mind, take the chance to list out three things that you would like to complete today. A little stretch in the middle of your day, acknowledging and accepting how you're feeling at any point in time. And when things start to feel a little bit overwhelming, take a step back, refocus on your breath, and try and find the similar headspace that you are in now. It's gonna be a good day, I promise. Alrighty, I feel nice and rejuvenated. Hopefully you're all just as geared up for the day. It's time to have at it. We absolutely love hearing from you guys. So remember, drop us a t comment, make sure you tag us in any of the challenges that you've done, or WhatsApp us if there's anything that you would like to hear about or if anyone you'd like to see on the show as well. If you're gunning for that afternoon stretch, Shane, Ashley, and Janice from Yoga Movement will be taking you through the basics at 3 p.m. And dinner plans are going to be inspired by Ben Logan on What You're Cooking at 4 o'clock. 
Not forgetting next week onwards, we've got an amazing lineup of giveaways just for you. Tune in tomorrow. We will be joined by homegrown comedian Sean Tupaz. And Sarah Lynn just uh, shows us just how we can get that gyro work in at home. That's going to be super cool. Anyway, we've also got an easy to make slime recipe with no chemicals. And we show you a couple of hacks when it comes to chopping up those onions. Prepare the tissues. We will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Stay safe, stay strong, and stay, stay at, at home. home.